Hi, I'm Teo Nikolakis with Audioholics, and in this episode, we're going to talk about HDMI extenders, the promise and pitfall. So stay tuned, and I'll be right back. Why don't we look at the HDMI problem? The HDMI problem is something that we've all experienced. And first and foremost, HDMI simply isn't the panacea or the cure-all that the cable was promised to be. First of all, we've all experienced that long cable runs and signal stability tend to go hand in hand. That's led to significant installation challenges in some cases among enthusiasts or custom installers. And to get a good cable to have a long run, you really have a significant increase in HDMI cable costs. And finally, we're running into the issue with every new version of HDMI, there are increasingly more bandwidth specs and more bandwidth requirements. And finally, well, we've got that fun EDID issue, which causes uh, interoperability challenges among devices. HDMI diagnosis tends to be a little bit of an art in and of itself and you always want to use certified fiber optic cables for long cable runs whenever possible and you want to maybe supplement part of your HDMI arsenal with products like Dr. HDMI 8K or the 8K VR room, the 40 gigabits VRR and HDR scaler splitter from HD Fury. These are products that I use in my own environment when I'm either looking to diagnose or to stabilize an HDMI signal. Now, are HDMI extenders the ultimate solution? Well, what is an HDMI extender anyway? And the simple answer is, it consists of a transmitter and a receiver. And I just happen to have here um, an HDMI extender from IO Gear, so you can get an idea of what an HDMI extender might look like. And that transmitter and receiver has a small footprint and it really runs over category cable, which means ethernet. Uh, sometimes it's a cat 5 E if you're talking about a 1080p signal, but when you start to get to 4k and some of the advanced 4k with HDR, you probably want a category six or a category seven cable for future proofing. The, Higher bandwidth applications will specify that, and sometimes you even need to look at a shielded CAT6. The other thing to note with HDMI extenders, they typically need to be home run from the transmitter to the receiver, as opposed to using a patch panel where you can cross connect uh, the connections at that point. Now, the really great thing about HDMI extenders is they can extend an HDMI signal up to 100 meters, so that's over 330 feet. So that's more than enough for most home installations. The other great thing about HDMI extenders is you can typically use them either as a home run or even in parallel or matrixed environments. So this IO gear extender, for example, allows you to have a HDMI input and output, and you can daisy chain multiple devices, and therefore you can have parallel connections going throughout your home. Uh, there are other matrixed environments where you might have a four by four or an eight by eight. You can then have one HDMI signal that you can give to a set of rooms. You can have two or three other signals that you can then distribute either in parallel or individually to other rooms. So HDMI extender really do provide a ton of flexibility for home and commercial environments. Now, the other really great thing is that HDMI extenders can even split the audio signal into Toslink or SPDIF for legacy environments or for other audio distributions. So here for the, um, the IO gear, for example, there's an option where I can either use uh, HDMI ARC or I can use a SPDIF Toslink optical output for the audio connection, and that would be right here. So again, a really neat option that you get with some of these devices. You can extend infrared signals in many of these devices, which is really great for custom installation applications. 
I'd like to hone in on a couple of pro tips here, and I want to give a nod over to Jason Dustel, who's a technical trainer for AB Pro Global, who provided some really great feedback on the slide deck and some information. So first of all, HDBase-D really is the standard for HDMI extensions over category cabling. Just note that HDBase-D is really designed for 20 to 100 meter installations. If the cabling is longer or shorter, you may not get the desired result. I want to emphasize that you do want to beware of cable lengths beyond 100 meters with category cabling. This is sometimes common, especially in retrofit jobs where the installer did not really check the cabling length. So what you want to do is always double check the cable lengths with a meter and absolutely ensure that you do not have any breaks in the cable. When you're dealing with HD base T extenders and installations, you want a home run. HD base T is limited to 10.2 gigabits per second. So to compensate that, we know the HDMI 2.1 spec is 48 gigabits per second, that DSC or data stream compression is engaged for anything beyond that to fit cable capabilities. And it is known to add artifacts into the image. Now, to combat that, some manufacturers use their own proprietary compression instead of DSC to combat artifacts. Now, be careful, manufacturers who claim distances greater than 100 meters over category cabling may actually be lowering the bandwidth to get things to work. My advice to you is check the specs. Pro tip number two is that fiber is still king. If you're dealing with high-end reference, large screen installations, then absolutely consider using either an active optical HDMI cable or a fiber-based extender. Now, many fiber-based extenders are uncompressed, once again, depending on the manufacturer. And the great thing about fiber is you don't really have a distance limitation because fiber can go up to two kilometers or 1.2 miles. Pro tip number three, be very careful about down mixing dangers. Audio extraction with HDMI extenders does require some planning. So be careful if you're going to down mix to two channel from a 5.1, 7.1, etc. Sometimes there's no down mixing in the extender. So you need to plan down mixing either in your AVR or your source device. And then number four points to emphasize again and again, use good quality copper-based cables, no CCC or copper-clad aluminum, and your terminations, they must be perfect to avoid issues. Never use pass-through style connectors, and the great thing is that some extenders have EDID management and scalers built in, and a better extender with these features just really does allow for a simpler signal chain. So what do you want to look for if you want to consider an HDMI extender? It's really simple, and please pay attention to a couple of these feature uh, items. Number one is try to identify the distance that you need and also the supported distance of the extender. Some will specify 30 meters, others may specify 70 meters, others 100 meters. What do you really need? And then make sure to take a keen look at what the HDMI features are supported by the extender. Like, uh, does it have HDMI 2.0B, HDCP 2.2? And then what bandwidth are you looking for? Some will only support up to 18 gigabits per second. Some are now clocking in at over 40 gigabits per second. Uh, I always want a consumer to identify their HDMI, the ethernet, specifications as well with the extender. Does it need CAT6? Does it require CAT7? Does it require a shielded cable in some cases? And then really hone in, as I mentioned, on the HDMI version and the HDCP, the bandwidth, and also check to make sure what those specs are at different distances. The really peculiar thing about HDMI transmitter receiver combos is they sometimes have different specifications depending on the distance. For example, some will say, hey, we carry full 60, uh, 60 hertz 4K HDR up to 100 meters. Others will have reduced specs. So for example, they'll carry 4K 60 hertz at 30 meters, but 
then they will only do 4K 30 hertz at 70 meters. So something to really be aware of. Some have 4K support, however, they do not support HDR or Dolby Vision. So that might be an important thing to you, especially if you're gonna use this in a reference or home theater setup, and you wanna have uh, some of those HDR and Dolby Vision features. And then also check the power requirements. Some have power on only one, maybe the transmitter or the receiver, some on both. And that may be an issue depending on where your final distribution is, because you may need extra outlets either near the television or display or what have you. So here's a quick example. I've used Atlona products before, and I've had very good experience with them. And the Atlona products now have certain models that support 4K 60, HDR 10, and Dolby Vision. Um, but then again, Dolby Vision at 30 hertz, etc., etc., depending on the distance. And these transmitter receiver combos, some are only for 70 meters, the other for 100 meters. So something to really hone in on again and make sure you look at the specifications. So ultimately, what are some of the pros and cons if you're looking at an HDMI extender? Well, the pros for the HDMI extenders are they really are great for long HDMI cable runs and even for complex distribution networks for parallel or matrixed environments. It's really plug and play. You just take a category cable, plug it in, to the transmitter, take the other end, plug it into the receiver, and boom, you really have an HDMI extension that's happening uh, from source to display. The next item is the obvious that all you need to do to upgrade your HDMI network when you're using this type of solution is as long as you have really a CAT6, CAT6A, CAT7 cabling environment in your home, all you have to do is then upgrade the transmitter receiver combo and boom, you've upgraded the HDMI distribution environment in your home and you get matrix, parallel, audio extraction, infrared extension, some EDID control and other features that you just don't get with a plain HDMI cable. That can happen when you have uh, an HDMI extender network at play. Now, what are some of the cons? Well, there's a cost. These devices can cost maybe $70, $80, all the way up to five, $600, depending on what features you want. And I would even say reliability. Um, there's also, with these types of extender receiver combos, they are slow to adopt and support certain technologies. For example, it took quite a while for us to start seeing uh, devices that were supporting HDR and Dolby Vision for the extender receivers. And some brands, frankly, are just more reliable than others. So consumer beware, please make sure that you read up on reviews and the actual experiences of users when using HDMI extenders, transmitters, receivers to see um, what their experience has been in different networks. Should you look to do a regular HDMI cable or install an HDMI extender? Like many things in audio and custom installation, it really depends. For new construction, we always recommend that you should try to run fiber or a minimum CAT6A for future proofing. And that way you can use either fiber or copper HDMI extenders in the future or for your current needs. For something that's point to point, let's say from a source device like an Apple TV 4K to your AVR or your AVR to a four or 8K television, if you're between two to four meters, six to 12 feet, then copper HDMI cable should be fine. Uh, I checked with the folks over at HD Fury and they recommend their own brands which they thoroughly test in addition to the HDMI certification and also they recommend Cable Matters S Kit and Cable Direct. Those seems to be the brand that they have had the best luck with using um, their HDMI products like the Dr. HDMI. Uh, just for transparency, I happen to use monoprice fiber optic cabling in my setup and I don't have any problems with HDMI issues. For distances that are greater than four meters or 12 feet, then absolutely consider fiber optic HDMI cables. Once again, the HD Fury folks recommend the 4K 120 from Zest Kit and Cable Direct on Amazon. Now, what are HDMI extenders perfect for? As I mentioned before, if you have a difficult installation, 
in your home or it's new construction, it's really perfect for that. If you're looking for something that's gonna give you good bang for the buck for cost over distance, then absolutely consider uh, an HDMI extender. They're also perfect for complex HDMI distribution requirements, so either in parallel or matrixed, and then leveraging existing ethernet cabling infrastructure that you may have in a home, and as I mentioned, future-proofing, just so long as you have uh, fiber or CAT6A or higher. So what's your experience? Have you had great, mediocre, or horror stories with HDMI extenders? Do you have any particular brands or models that you've had positive experiences with and certain applications? And how are you using HDMI extenders within your home theater or home theater environment? Please let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear you and keep listening. And don't forget our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. We appreciate your support. You'll get direct access to us, you can ask questions, and you can even suggest topics for future programs. And one more thing. Based on the HDBase T Installer Expert program, they've come up with this great little cheat sheet that's called the HDBase T Installer's 10 Cable Commandments. So I'm just going to provide a summary for you because this is really a great overview. Now, at commandment number one, the LAN is thy cable. Cable quality and Ethernet installation best practices always apply here. So the higher resolution your target installation, the better the cable quality needs to be. And again, no copper clad aluminum. Commandment number two, thou shalt not untwist wires unnecessarily. Twisted pairs are there to keep EMI at bay. So to keep EMI cancellation intact by untwisting your cables no more than a quarter to max half inch and remove as little of the sheathing as possible. Commandment number three, thou shalt handle your cable with care. Cable resiliency doesn't mean that they're indestructible. So you wanna make sure that you're tying your category cables loosely and that you use standard support systems like jig hooks or trays. And you wanna avoid rough handling, tight tie wraps, clamping, and stapling. Commandment four, thou shalt not overbend your cables. Too much bend can damage an ethernet cable. So keep the bend uh, radius to a minimum, at least four times the diameter of the cable. Uh, too much bend just compromises the signal transmission and it can introduce noise and crosstalk if the twisting wiring is modified. Commandment number five, thou shalt keep cables from power sources. Keep cables at least 12 inches or more from power cables and other sources of EMI like transformers or light fixtures and absolutely use shielded cabling in high EMI environments or of course, fiber is still king. Commandment six, thou shalt mind your distances. HDBase T delivers the five play feature set over 100 meters or 328 feet. Higher quality cables keep signals better than lower quality cables over distance. So you want to have a noise-free environment and deliver better performance over noisy EMI prone environments. Commandment seven, thou shalt not use patch cords unnecessarily. Use home runs. We talked about this in the main presentation. Every connection introduces transmission loss and use less than two patch cords per cable run and keep less than five meters from the end. Commandment eight, Thou shalt terminate carefully. Terminate according to T568A or T568B standards. Use the right termination tools, obviously, and check with HD manufacturers for preferred termination standards. Commandment nine, thou shalt test, 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 and test. Test every single cable and terminations, both during and after after installation to guarantee that your cable quality integrity are there and you can identify problems as the installation goes. Get rid of your headaches, guys. And then finally, commandment 10, thou shalt be organized. Document and label all cabling. And if you can, include a diagram. This is really a lifesaver for any upgrades, expansion, and troubleshooting you need to do. And be sure to remove unused old cabling. So that's it. Follow the Ten Commandments of HD Base T.